Hi there once again and welcome back to this course in ABE 153. We are now moving on to the third part of our course topic which is the machine elements. When we say machine elements, from the word elements it's, it's like or it's something like the building blocks. Okay, building blocks and in the context of machinery or equipment then we are referring to the to the parts to the parts and um, assemblies that makes or that that comprises the the machine okay so let's write here um, parts okay that comprises comprises the machine however we say parts it can be parts it can be further classified as parts like fabricated parts like for example the casing uh, or the enclosure of a centrifugal fan so if you have here a centrifugal fan so this casing I mean if you are designing a fan then inside inside here or let me draw the um, the section so here's the hub and then we have bleach right here so we can have forward curve or backward curve All right so we have here the the hub and then the bleeds of the fan and of course um, since it it needs to be rotated uh, rotated or it is I mean the function or the operation is that it is rotating then it's going to be resting on a shaft and the shaft will be resting on on a bearing and in order for this shaft to rotate then of course we need we need some power source like for example electric motor or engines and let's say we'll use an electric motor here then how do you connect the electric motor to the to the shaft of this um, of this fan? Then of course you will need some transmission elements, power transmission elements like um, or typically this is uh, belt drives. Okay, and this enclosure right here, um, this one is just being fabricated. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about. Uh, right here when, when I say parts it can be further um, classified as fabricated parts or some standard parts okay, and, and when I say standard parts like for example the, um, the bearings um, the bearings where the shaft is resting or the bearings that supports the shaft and what else for example the the pulleys and the belts and what else the the bolts the bolts and nuts okay, so what that means for standard parts uh, that means that you just you just buy them in uh, I mean you just buy them as it is all right so you are not going to uh, to design a bearing um, we're not going to design a belt or manufacture a belt but rather we just um, we just we just get them from the shelves okay so um, this machine elements um, this building blocks uh, this is actually the bearings the pulleys the shafts um, the bolts and nuts um, the clutches brakes springs there are still many others and if you if you recall in our topic number one about the introduction to machine design we have a figure right there um, where it says okay if we have here machine elements we can classify machine elements as okay, in terms of in terms of power source right and another one um, there's also machine elements that's for transformation of mechanical power of mechanical power and that's the, um, the definition by the way of a machine it's about transmission of power if you recall also in our lecture in ABE 161 or I think that's in ENSC 105 
what's the difference between a machine okay versus a structure okay and we say that um, structure it's it's actually more on the trans uh, on the transmission of forces but for machines it's more on the transmission of power and when you say power um, it involves speed um, rotational speed and motions as well and uh, torques okay so that's the um, uh, I think that's the difference between a machine and, um, and a structure so there are machine elements for for or responsible responsible for transform transforming that mechanical power okay and an another one right here we have um, actually machine components I think they should be machine components and we have here uh, structural members like the frames or the supports okay, so right here for the um, power source usually we have engines internal combustion engines and we also have electric motors so these two are the um, typical for for many machinery or, or equipment electric motors Hey, and this one for the transformation of mechanical power um, this can be further classified as those elements that dissipates okay, so those elements that dissipates examples uh, examples of this are clutches clutches and brakes Okay, and when we say brakes, we know that um, if we have a a rotational component, like for example the wheel of um, the wheel of a tractor or the wheel of a car, then if we hit the brakes, then uh, it's actually transforming the power um, into heat. So instead of uh, having a motion, um, we are reducing the motion. And this clutch is a machine elements responsible for engaging or or disengagement of the power transmission okay and we can uh, right here we can also um, classify uh, those machine elements that's responsible for transmission and when we say transmission we can it can be uh, rotational to linear okay rotational to linear an example of this are power screws and some types of gear drives like the um, rack and pinion gears so rotational motion and then it is converted to a linear motion An example of that are uh, these gear drives okay so this gear and right here we have a I think this is a rack and pinion yeah rack and pinion gears so this one rotates this one rotates um, I mean has a rotational motion but this one has a linear motion so that's one of the example of those transmission uh, those machine elements that converts rotational motion to linear motion another one is the power screw so we have here power screw and um, some gears right okay and what else uh, it can also have rotational to rotational so the input is a rotational motion and the output is also a rotational motion so right here for the uh, rotational to rotational we have um, we have gears gear drives we can also have uh, chain drives and we can also have uh, belt drives okay and this is our topic um, for now this is the uh, it's about belt drives and lastly we can have transmission but it's more on the storage so instead of transmitting the power it's more on um, storing the power okay and the types of machine elements for storage are flywheels and, and flywheels and springs 
Okay, so that's in our lecture number one. So you see here that there are actually many types of machine elements. And right now we are just going to focus on the bell tribes and specifically just the uh, one type of bell tribe. That's the heavy duty V bolts. Okay, so let's start now. Okay, so for for the introduction, um, we know that um, if we want if we want to um, to transmit the power from a power source, let's say here, that's the electric motor, to our equipment. So it's this one is going to be our driver, and this one will be the driven. So in order to transmit the power, then um, we know that we can actually do that by gears or chains or belt choice. But of course, when I say that uh, you can do, what I mean by that is that depends upon the, um, the conditions because there are situations where in gear drives is, um, is much appropriate, uh, appropriate for the situation. Other times, it's, it's going to be chain or other times, that's going to be belt drives. Okay, and the reason for that is if this one... Um, actually this one has a specified speed like uh, let's say this is set, uh, 1750 rpm and it has also a given hp power and um, speed and if this equipment needs a, a speed that's different from this uh, let's say it has a speed like uh, let's say 500 rpm or i don't know let's just say 500 rpm okay so that means there's a reduction of uh, there's a reduction of the of the required speed and actually that's the rotational speed and we know from our subject in dynamics that there's there's going to be a, a, a relationship between the the diameter and the and the speed okay and and one way we can do that is actually to, to change this diameter. So you notice here we have a smaller diameter in our driver. And here we have a larger diameter. So that means if this is fast, this one will be slower. So if we have a bigger diameter right here, and this one is smaller, then we are actually increasing the, the, the speed. Okay, so now let's focus about uh, let's focus our discussion now in the heavy-duty vehicles. So this transmission, this is called the heavy... Um, this is a belt drive, belt drive power transmission, and you see right here it has actually a lot of strands. So there's actually a lot of number of belts, so that it can deliver the required power. Okay, so let's talk about the anatomy of the V-bolt. And by the way, we are just talking about, um, I mean, we'll just consider or we'll just discuss the heavy-duty V-bolts. It's just one type of belts because there are still many other types. So right here, we have a cross-section of that, um, that V-bolt. So it's actually a letter V uh, or it's, uh, it shapes like a, a wedge and we have here the the part like for example the the outer part is a rubberized fabric cover which covers the belt and um i mean it covers the belt and protects the, the belt core and we have here cords tensile cords okay which transmit the power and ensure uniform load distribution and we have also the um, top fabrics right here to provide heat and oil resistance and, and stuff like that and right here we have a section that's for uh, that's called the compression section uh, elastomer which resists the compression fatigue and provides um, firm lateral pressure against the sheave sidewall so right here we have a cross section uh, of the v belt and i mean v belt resting on the sheave so here's the sheave by the by the way when i say sheave that's the other term for V pulley. Okay, so that's, that's the meaning, V pulley. Okay, so right here, this is what we call the, the groove of the sheave or the V pulley. And this, this belt right here is just sitting, uh, or I mean this belt right here is just sitting on that groove. Okay, so the dimension of the belt 
actually you can find that in our pass and it's just being specified like or it has a dimension and this top top width and also the height okay and in our in our pass it's specified in terms of of millimeters but in some manufacturers catalog it's uh, specified in inches okay and what else now in terms of the advantage and disadvantage of the belt drive so we have here in our table 9-1 so can be used for longer center dis distances than gears what that means is that if we have here um, when we say center distances if we have a uh, a shaft right here and right and another one would be right here so the use of gears would be appropriate because um, it's there's going to be meshing of the teeth however when this center distance this is the center distance that's the distance from from the from the shaft axis to another shaft axis so if this center distance becomes large enough right so that means that if you are going to use a gear then you will need a larger gear right so larger gear means uh, simply means that you have more materials so that's why other other machine elements like uh, belt drives and chain drives are rather used okay what else they can also transmit um, relatively heavy tensile loads uh, also usually used for power transmission between parallel shafts or also perpendicular shafts we'll we will discuss this later um, as we go on and another advantage is that it can vary the speed by combinations of the sheave uh, diameter of the, of the two shafts so as I've said if we have large uh, we have a large diameter in the driver and we have a small diameter in the driven then we are or we can increase the speed right or if we have a small in the uh, small diameter in the driver and right here we have a large diameter in the driven then we are decreasing the speed okay what else um, it doesn't need any lubrication and uh, it has a low maintenance cost and also easy installation okay so those are the advantages but also there are there's going to be disadvantages as, uh, as well so number one is the uh, the the elongate because of wear and operation uh, and hence mechanisms needed to maintain the proper tension so take up the belt slot so what that means is that if this the the belt drive uh, if this uh, i mean this is our two pulleys and this is our belt but through time because this belt they are actually um something like th there's going to be wear and sometimes elongations and in that way there's going to be uh, there's gonna be there's gonna be some uh, slackness okay so slackness then that means that if if it's not gripping well or or if it's not having the proper contact on the pulley then uh, that means that means it can't transmit the required power okay so it's not being efficient so that's why you have to provide um, take up so we say take up is something like we are just pulling this uh, this this pulley so that we can have proper tension right here in the belt okay another one is they rotate with the sleep and creep conditions and also on power loss caused by sleep and creep uh, we have the data and also it has uh, resistance to shock loads is lower as compared to uh, I think chain and in gears and also sensitivity to dirt and foreign matter is high okay now let's move on to the different configurations right here we have the open belt drive okay so when you say open belt drive we, we just have by the way in, in my figure if this is my arrow that means that this one is the driver okay so if this is the driver and it is rotating this way then of course the driven will will also rotate the same 
direction, right? So in this configuration, we call that open bell drive. And another um, bell drive is the cross bell drive. So that means that if this driver is rotating clockwise, the driven would be rotating counterclockwise. Why? Because of this configuration. So that's also um, possible. And another one is the quarter turn belt drive. Okay, so the characteristic of this is if this is our shaft axis for the driver, the shaft axis for uh, on the driven would be perpendicular to this axis. Okay, so uh, that's also possible, and uh, that's what we call quarter turn belt drive. Okay, now let's move on to the types of belts. As I have said, there are many types of belts. Uh, we have the heavy-duty V-belts, we have narrow V-belts, uh, we have double V. Um, okay, so let's refer to this figure. Okay, when we say heavy-duty V-belts, so it looks something like this. From the word itself, it's more on the um, heavy applications. And we have narrow V-belts narrow v belts um, so it's just something like the heavy duty v belts except that the dimensions is uh, is narrower as compared to the heavy duty v belts okay another one is the double v belts or hexagonal so from the cross section we see here that it's a hexagonal um, cross section and the application of this is if we have a serpentine drives like like for example, we have drives like maybe this, then maybe right here. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so maybe something like this. So if we have many pulleys, right? So let's say these are our pulleys. And one would be the driver, and the other would be the uh, driven. So right here, it's going to be uh, riding on top. But right here, the top side of the belt would be riding on this pulley. Okay. So again, so from the driver's side, let's say this is our driver. So in this pulley, it's um, the bottom portion is actually what's riding on the on the groove of the sheave but in this pulley it's gonna be the top side okay so okay so that's what we call a serpentine drive and another one is the light duty and uh, there's no light duty here in our uh, in our figures but from the word itself it's just um, it's just for lighter applications as compared to heavy duty v belts or classical v belts but the cross section would still be the same as this okay and we also have v rib belts and it's something like a flat belt except that there's a rib right here so that's a v rib belts just something like a cross um, or i mean something like a combination of the flat belts and the um, and the V-belts. Okay, another one would be the Kaget belts, like like uh, like as shown in here. So the the grooves in here is along the the belt length, All right? So compare that to this V-rib, the the grooves are along the cross section, but this one uh, this is along the 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 length. And this one is for, uh, I think, for the timing. I mean, when timing is is important. Okay. And there are still many others, like the um, variable speed and the automotive V-bolts that we're not going to um, discuss. Okay, so now, as I've said, we'll just focus on uh, on one type, which is the heavy-duty V-bolts, because that's that's uh, what the bias has specified uh, only it's about the heavy duty v-bolts or classical v-bolts okay so how do we specify v-bolts 
With six here, commercially available vehicles are made to the standards according to type and length. So take note of this. That's according to type and length. So when we say type, it refers to, to this one. So is it type A, type B, C, D, and E? And basically, it just refers to the size of the cross-section. When we say type A, it has just some uh, certain ranges of dimensions. Uh, and type B, it has also some uh, ranges of dimensions in, uh, in the height and the top width, and C, D, and E. But the idea is that you will notice that as you have more area or you have more cross-sectional area, then that means you, you'll have more, more power. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's the main idea about here. Okay, so of course, that means that in some applications, you would need um, probably you would need C or you need B or you need A. But typically for agricultural applications, uh, what's specified for us, agricultural applications is type B. However, we need to, uh, to show that, I mean, in our computations here or in our homeworks, we need to show that, um, that it's really type B. I mean, in terms of com uh, computations or charts um, or the codes or standards and things like that. Okay, so that's that's the main idea about this and uh there's also a metric size by the way uh the the designation about this a b c d and e it's actually in the inch yeah that means that the dimensions here are are in inch however in our pies it's uh it's it's specified or it's dimensioned uh, in millimeters okay so you have to understand that because for the metric size there's another uh, specifications like for example the a it's 13 c in terms of the metric size or the b the 17 c so on and so forth however we retain this again in our pass we retain this type but the dimensions given uh, in the table are in uh, are in millimeter Okay, so what else? So here, a bevel specify in terms of type of cross section and the pitch length. Okay, so right here, I have an um, right here in the figure, uh, I have this standard belt length. So it's a when you buy a V belt, it's actually a standard um, standard size, and you will see in the markings right here. So uh, actually, I bought a V-belt uh, here. So you know, one of the markings is this. So you'll see also the resistant uh, oil and heat resistant. But the one that I'd like to highlight is this one, this marking. That's B51. So that's type B and 51. The length is 51, and this 51 is actually, uh, that's in inch. And this 51 is the, uh, is the length pitch length or the nominal length of the of the belt so this is 51 inches okay so that's how we specify the V belt so again you have to specify the type the cross section and you also have to, to specify the nominal uh, length okay uh, another one right here Okay, is this. So this one is the same as the one in the in the fig um, in the in the figure. So it's B45, so that means it's type B and 45. 45 um, inches in length. Okay, now let's move on to the sheaves. Sheaves or it's just the same as V pulleys. So V police also comes um, or is also designated according to type, okay, according to type and pulley construction as well as the number of grooves. Okay, so when we say type, it just uh, correspond to the type of the belts as well. So it can be, uh, it has type A, type B, C, D, and E. So therefore, what that means is if you have a type B V belt, then it should be mated with a type B pulley v 
pulley. Okay, so if you have a type C V belt, then your pulley or shift should also be in, in type C. Okay, so that's just it. And in terms of construction, uh, it's just simply uh, the construction in, I mean, in terms of if it is solid construction or if it's a web type or if it's a spoke type. So right here, I've also bought a pulley, uh, this example. So here's a solid construction. This is an example of a solid construction. Right, so this is solid construction, and here's the spoke type. Okay, so here's actually the spoke. When you say spoke, it's the connect uh, or it's a part or portion that connects the the hub to the to the rim or the wheel right here. Okay, so it's it's called spoke type, and the web type is something like a solid construction, but it has holes. Okay, and you would notice actually that. For smaller size pulleys, then that's just for. Uh, I mean, typically it's it's a solid type construction, or uh, sometimes uh, larger larger ones would be uh, web type web type constructions. But for large pulleys, large larger pulleys, uh, we have this because imagine if you have a solid all solid construction right here, then you'll have more mass. Okay, so I guess I'll continue this. Uh, this discussion in the in the next video